A recent poll in my North East England constituency showed that people's number one concern now, politically, is high energy prices. And I suspect in many of your regions you would get similar reactions. And this is not surprising if we look at the figures. Since 2005, household electricity costs have increased in Japan by 1%, in the US by 5%, in the EU by 29%, and in the UK by 80%. So whilst there is no, as President Van Rompuy said, uh, game changer on the horizon, I nevertheless welcome the decision to focus political capital on this area. And the priorities laid out by the Council, namely energy efficiency, a single market, investments and diversification of sources, can be delivered by flexible legislation that incentivises households and industries to pursue these policies. And not, I hope, by arbitrary targets and by one-size-fits-all laws. <clears throat> After all, it was arbitrary targets invented, I think, to suit the press release why energy plants across, U across Europe are closing down before we even have suitable replacements available to replace them. Now, ultimately, of course, much of the legislation on this subject will be decided after this Parliament after the Commission and after even President Van Rompuy have left office. However, in my view, a sense of urgency about this issue today will prevent a sense of panic when we eventually run out of energy in the future. Now, in the press, re press room of the Council, it seemed uh, that when I was there, most journalists only wanted to talk about oil. Not crude oil, of course, but olive oil. And it's not often that you hear a politician admit they were wrong, although many of us have tried to encourage Danny Cohn-Bendit down this path for a while. But in this instance, the Commission was very wrong to push through this ban, and I welcome the U-turn by Commissioner Kiolos. It's not a matter of life and death, of course, but it is, I think, symbolic of the mentality of the EU institutions that they think people cannot even be trusted to think for themselves and to decide how they want to consume their olive oil in a restaurant. Let's hope that this ban won't be recycled and let's hope the Commission can in future focus its energies on tackling problems that people really care about and not those promoted by powerful lobby groups. Uh, Mr President, um, I said last week that cooperation to prevent illegal tax evasion should never be used as a cover for promoting the harmonisation of all taxes because we all know that any harmonisation would never be downwards. The EU is already uncompetitive enough in worldwide stakes without us making the situation even worse. Which is why I was very concerned to see the remarks by President Schultz after the uh, Council meeting last week when he said, we have tax competition within the European Union which is not very reasonable. Therefore, minimum standards in the frame of taxes should be put in force and I think Commissioner Semeta is on the way to make a basic proposal for this. Now, I hope he was wrong. I hope this is a misquote. And I hope, President, that you will not be seeking to promote uh, tax harmonisation in such a manner to end the uh, competitive tax rates that have helped countries like Ireland to recover from this recession. Any effort to reduce uh, harmonised taxes or introduce minimum levels would be, in my view, a great mistake politically and economically. If countries want to introduce uncompetitive tax rates, then, of course, in a democracy, that's their right but let's not drag everybody else down to French levels just to make President Hollande's socialist policies <laughs> seem slightly less disastrous. Thank you.